In this tutorial, we're going to do a basic overview of working with the true-false variables in Articulate Storyline. Now again, when you're working with variables, it's a three-step process. You create the variable, then you create a trigger to adjust the value of the variable, and then you create a trigger that evaluates the value of that variable and uses it for something. In this case, we're going to use a true-false variable. So let's say we have a variable that we called visited. And what I want to do is set visited from false to true if I've done something. So in this case, I'm going to click this button. That's going to take me to another slide. When I'm complete with that, I'm going to come back to this screen. When I go to that next slide, because I was there, I want to change the variable from false to true. So when I come here, I can evaluate that that's already been visited. So the variable's changed to true. So I can change the state of this button. So let's see what happens. I'm going to click here. And I've got a trigger on here that says adjust that variable from false to true. So when I click on it, it comes back here. And then there's a trigger on here that says if that variable is equal to true, change the state of this button. So now it indicates that I visited this. So the nice thing with variables is that they span your entire course. So you can collect information. And then based on what you're collecting, you can use that information throughout your course. In this case, we're collecting slides that you visited. And if you meet a certain criteria, we're going to change the state of this particular button. So let's see how this is built. So you should have this slide in your downloads. Go ahead and open it up so you can follow along. The first thing we want to do is set up our navigation. So we've got this Module 1 button. And we want to create a trigger that jumps from this slide to 3.4. And then on 3.4, we want to set a trigger that when I click on the Back button, comes to 3.3. So let's go ahead and set our navigation first. So I've got my button, which is right here, Mod 1. So I'm going to add a trigger. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? I want to jump to Slide. And then we'll choose our slide. So that's going to be 3.4, which is right here, when the user clicks on the button. So I know that trigger works. And now we're going to go to this slide. And on the Back button, we want to add a trigger. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? I want to jump to Slide. We'll go back to 3.3 when the user clicks the Back button. So if we preview this, we should be able to go back and forth between these two slides. So let's go ahead and preview the scene. So I'm at Module 1. I'm going to click on that. That takes me to the Module 1. I've gone through all my data. I'm done with Module 1. I'm going to hit the Back button, and that takes me back. So I can go back and forth. All right, so now we need to set our variables. What we want to do is start with a variable that's set to false. And then when I've completed my module, I want to set the variable to true. And then because it's true, I want to change the state of this to look like it's been visited. So it's a great way for me to track what you're doing in a course. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing we need to do is create a variable. So come up here, create a variable. We're just going to add one. Now we can title it whatever we want to. We'll just title this Mod Complete. It's going to be a true-false variable. And the starting value is going to be false. Hit OK. Now we can see that our variables here. We have Mod Complete. It's a true-false variable, and the starting value is false. So let's hit OK. Now I always want to put a reference point up here so we can make sure that our variables are doing what we want them to do. So let's insert a text box. And then to insert the reference, we just go to Insert, Reference, and then we select our variable, hit OK. Now this will always show the value of our variables. And this is really important when you go back and forth between slides. Right now it's simple because we're going from one slide to the next. But let's say you had 50 slides that you were tracking. You might have a whole bunch of variables that you need to use. By putting those reference points on there, you're able to see that the variables are doing what they need to do. So let's preview this. When we look at the slide, we can see that our variable is at false because that's what the starting point is. Now what we need to do is adjust the variable. So let's go back. So I'm going to come over here to this slide. And what I want to do is when I click the Back button, we already have a trigger on here that's going to jump back to the previous slide. 
But I also want to trigger on here that adjust the variable. So I want it to go from false to true. So let's create a trigger. What do I want to do and when do I want to do it? In this case, I want to adjust variable. I select my variable, mod complete. And it's a value that we want to change. So I'm going to change it from false to true. When the user clicks on the back button. So if we read it, adjust variable, mod complete, the value should become false when the user clicks the back button. So let's hit OK. And I can see here, so when I hit the back button, two things happen. It's going to jump to slide 3.3, and it's also going to set the variable equal to, should be equal to true, when the user clicks. So let's go ahead and see if this works for us. Okay, we can see the variable set at false. I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to hit the back button, but the variable is still set at false. Let's try it one more time. I click on it, I hit the back button, but the variable is set at false. So something's not working right. Let's go figure out what's happening. If we look at the trigger on the back button, you'll notice it does two things. It jumps to slide 3.3. And then it sets the variable to true. The problem here is that the triggers go in a certain order. So it's going to jump to slide 3.3. Well, at that point, it's already gone, so it can't trigger this action. So what we want to do is change the order of these triggers. And this is a good example of where this comes in handy. So we'll select our trigger. You've got the up arrow here. Let's just go ahead and change it. So now what's going to happen when I hit the back button, it's going to adjust the variable first, and then it's going to jump. So let's see if this works. So it's set to false. I hit go. I'm over here. When I hit back, we can see that the variable was changed. So we know that that instruction's working. I click the button. I complete my module. I click the back button. Now my variable's changed. Now I can add a trigger that says if this variable's true, then I want this to change its state. So let's do that. So I want to change the state of this button to complete when the variable is equal to true. So let's go ahead and add a trigger. Change the state of the module one button to complete when variable changes. And which variable? Mod complete. And we're going to show the condition. So we want that variable, mod complete, to be equal to the value true. Hit OK. So if we read it, we want to change the state of module 1 to complete when the variable changes on mod, mod complete. So mod complete needs to be equal to true. So when that variable changes, this should change. So let's see what happens. I can see the starting value is false. I'm going to hit go. I'm going to come back. Now the value is true, but the button didn't change. Let's try to figure out why the button didn't change. If we look at the trigger, it says change the state of module 1 to complete when the variable changes to true. The problem is the variable is really never changing. We're coming back to the slide. But the variable's not changing because the variable's already at true by the time it gets here. So what we really have to do is we have to evaluate the timeline and we have to say change it when the timeline starts on the slide with the condition that this variable is true. So we have to modify it a little bit. So you've got to kind of think through the logic of what's going on. So just to repeat that, when we come to this slide, the variable is never changing because it's already been changed. There's a trigger here that when it changes, but since it's already at that value, it's not changing. So what we need to do is set the trigger at the start of the timeline or when the slide starts and then evaluate the condition of that variable. So let's go ahead and modify the trigger. So what we want to do is change the state of that button to complete when the timeline starts of that slide 3.3. So when the timeline of the st slide starts, it's going to change the state of it. And then we need to set our condition. So the condition is going to be when module 
complete is equal to true. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now this should work. So if we preview the slide, we can see it's set to false. I'm going to click on this. I've completed my module. When I click on this, it's going to go back, but it's also changing the value to true. And so we can see it's true, but there was also a trigger that says when the timeline starts, change the state if this is true. In this case, the trigger is the timeline, and then the timeline condition is that that variable is equal to true. And that's basically it. Now working with variables, if you're just getting started, might seem a little bit confusing. Go through these practice activities and do them, and then find some reasons why you might need to use the variable. Start with some simple things and, then, and just start to build your skills from there. If you have any questions, jump in the community and people are more than willing to help you out. Now it's just a matter of you practicing and then applying it to your next e-learning course.